Okay, welcome to another episode of Stephen Follows Instructions. Just have some of my trusty coffee here. As we settle in for what could be hours and hours of fun. Well, I don't know if it'll be hours and hours of fun, but it'll be fun. So we'll just check and see if the live stream is streaming. Yep, looks pretty good. And uh, so... I'll just move that over here to the other window. There we go. So I got my control center here on the left and my actual working stuff on the right. So that looks pretty good. So this is the control center. This is my working stuff. This is the browser that I'm working with just in case I go. To, I will go to something else. So, um, And let's just see now. I'll just see if I can't find the actual URL for this broadcast. Control J. Well, that looks pretty good. So this is the control center. This is my working stuff. All right. So. And I know it should have accents on there, but it's just a Twitter announcement, so who cares, right? <laughs> I know I don't care. All right. Okay, so there we are. Maybe we'll get some visitors. Maybe we won't. We don't know. But uh, let's have a look then at Protégé. So here's how this works. Um, uh, so, well, here's how the program works. Um, I follow instructions and inevitably something goes wrong and we all have a good laugh. Um, so, Protégé is a free open source ontology editor. You notice it's from stanford.edu, supported by a strong community of academic, government, and corporate users. Um, so I'm doing this because I have a project where I work uh, involving ontologies and uh, I've seen this program in action. I've, I even opened it up on another computer but I want to actually sit down go through it A to, A to Z and learn it. So and oh I actually have a concurrent viewer. It might just be me. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. There we go. Oh no, that's 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 a person. So hi, person who's watching the uh, video. Um, anyhow, so I'm gonna go right from the very beginning. Download it, install it, see if that works, um, and then see what it has to teach me. So here we go. I'm gonna download it now. Protege is a Java application. It supports the OWL2 web ontology language. So, you know, it's a direct in-memory in connections to description logic reasoners. To Java application it requires a Java runtime environment. I don't know if I have one on my computer or not. Let's just download. Oh, I hate stuff like this. At least they tell me it'll help with future funding. So, okay. Uh, project. I'm just going to put my own website there. Uh, ontologies or instructional design. That's good enough. Register. All right. So the download has completed. So now you can see the uh, the difference here in the uh, the two windows you're seeing I think um, yeah you should be seeing it uh, so 
here's my download window in the upper right and my web browser still sitting there on the lower right so let's focus on the download editor I'll give you a bit better a view here so okay so this is my right screen so here it is I'm gonna double click on this uh, oh right so okay uh, okay oh I see I have to extract it all so I'm going to extract it all I'll extract it it's in it's a zip file that I downloaded so it's Java right so there's no real installer or anything so I'll extract all and I'm going to extract it to uh, E program files E is my uh, solid state drive that's because C is so small on this computer I have an E drive for pretty much everything so and D is just a regular hard drive uh, which I use for big stuff that I don't access a lot all right so let's go in here let's select the folder uh, let's give it a subdirectory here new folder protege it oops do you want to merge? Oh, do I already have a folder named Protege? Oh, maybe I've already installed it on this machine. Yeah, it looks like I have. Oh, well. <laughs> okay. Um, but basically, here's what I do. I just select the folder. Extract. So I'm going to do it anyways, right? It won't matter if I have it installed twice, I don't think. We'll find out. So and it tossed it into this Protege 5.5.0. So I'm going to go into that folder and there's the executable uh, Protege.exe. I wonder if I can make this text bigger for you. Uh, display settings. This one and change the scale to like 150 uh, seems better doesn't it yeah certainly easier for you to see so okay uh, so protege.exe let's run this so I just double click on it and let's see what happens so I must have a Java runtime environment somewhere on my system <laughs> okay oh automatic update let's install everything uh, is there a way to select everything yep yeah. oh no well, well that, that didn't select everything it just highlighted everything all right so let's just one by one select everything because why not I mean, what could go wrong? Yeah. Actually, I probably should. You know, I don't know. Yeah, well, let's install everything. Uh, la -di -da -di -da. Okay, install. So everything's being updated and installed. So help protege documentation. All right, so here we go. This is the Protege documentation. This is the installation. Updates will take effect when you next start Protege. So let's close it and let's start it again. And nothing. Oh, there we go. You can tell it's a Java application, right? It's well, for one thing, it's not picking up the text size from the system. Of course not. Uh, it's not very attractive. So let's let's see if we can't make the text size a bit bigger again, just so just to make it better for us. So just hit File and the Preferences. You always have to search around for that sort of stuff. Editor delay. Da da da. -da. Annotations, debugger, explanations, general, new entities, user details, renderer. It doesn't seem to be a way to change the text size. 
That doesn't seem very helpful. How, how can you build a, an application and not allow people to change the text size? It's, it's like user hostile design. All right, let's see if we can't find something. So, so Protege, change text size. Okay. Let's make that a little smaller just for me. See, it's, uh, we will look into this. That was five years ago. Looks like a problem with owl cell renderer. Oh, for goodness sakes, people. Increasing font size. Uh, so it's been an issue for 10 years. How to set the font size. With the UI, you can use window Increase, decrease font size with the UI. Okay. Where is it? Is this? No. Right, this is it here. With the UI, cancel. So, view. I'm not seeing anything that makes the uh, font size bigger or smaller. Look and feel. Protege. Windows. Okay, I've changed it. Maybe that. I'll have to restart it. Maybe that'll make it actually use Windows properties. Nope. Oh, it does seem a bit bigger, doesn't it? Uh, not really. Hmm. Well, I don't see any way of making this bigger. Um, so, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that, viewers. I see I've lost all my viewers. Or lost my viewer. <laughs> let's see. Can I? Let's see. Try to display, trying to make the text even bigger. It's going to make it hard for me, but. Oh, that's something we could do. We can just reduce the window size. So that'd be about 1280 by 1024? No. Uh, yeah, that's good. Keep these changes. Well, that really did a number on my uh, right screen display, hey? Eh? But this should work better now. Yeah, okay. All right, we'll try it like that. We'll go back to the application now. And again, it's a little bit better. It's not hugely better. Um, but now if I change the display settings, I might be able to change my font again. Yeah, I see we're at 100%. I can go, I'm allowed to go up to 125%. All right, that's as good as it gets, folks. <laughs> um, but that's not bad. So that's at the top there. That's just the, uh, the bar at the top. Okay, good enough. Um, so I'm trying to learn about... 
protege. So here we are. I'll just make my this a little bit smaller. Um, again, that's just for me. All right, Protege 5 installation, getting started. A quick start guide for Protege. Protege is an OWL technology, ontology, development environment, etc. So we've installed it. Okay, open the pizza ontology. Open the pizza ontology from the web. How do we do this? From the file menu, choose open from URL. Dialog will be displayed asking you whether you want to open the ontology in the current window. Choose no. In the next dialog, we'll put this in the URI field and press OK. So, OK, copy. So, oops, I've forgotten the instruction already. <laughs> uh, from the file menu, choose open. From the file menu, file, choose open. So right off the bat, it did not behave the way I expected it to. Uh, let's see. A dialogue would be displayed asking you whether you want to open the ontology in the current window. It did not ask me that. Okay, let's try this again. From the file menu, choose open from URL. Okay, maybe I did that wrong. File, open, whoops, open from URL. Okay. All right, still didn't ask me a question, but I see I can enter the URI in there, and there are some others here that I could use, and then click OK. And so it's loaded it. Okay, so it has loaded the ontology. So we see now we've got an active ontology, entities, individuals by class, and DL query. Let's have a look at that. Entities, owl, thing. Boy, that's... They just don't help you with these uh, text sizes, do they? I can see why it's so tiny, but still, it should be bigger. All right, so this is... The class hierarchy. So I have a thing underneath thing we can have countries or food or I guess anything else. One food is pizza, another food is ice cream, but we're not doing ice cream today. Pizza and now we have types of pizza. Cheesy, interesting, meaty, etc. Then we have pizza based, deep pan or thin and crispy. No Neapolitan style, I see. Um, pizza toppings. Nut, nut. Meat, herb. Oh, I see. And there's some subdivisions here. Chicken, ham, hot spiced, beef, pepperoni. Notice these names here. Like they can't just use pepperoni. No, it's got to be pepperoni sausage topping. It's interesting. Okay, so that's the... Okay, so that's the entities, the class hierarchy, object properties. Okay, has ingredient, is ingredient. So we have these two properties. Data properties, just the top one. Annotation properties, these are all Dublin Core and RDF and SCOs. I don't know what SCOs is. And DC terms, Dublin Core. Data types, XSDs and individuals. America, Fran England, France, Germany. Okay. Individuals by class. There we go. So country, there's our countries. There's our sauce toppings. All right, pepperoni sauce, okay. And DL query, we don't have anything in there yet. All right, so that's a quick exploration. Okay, you will now be presented with the main Protege workspace, which displays the active ontology tab by default. It shows an overview of the active ontology, including metrics on its contents, 
annotations on the ontology and imported ontologies. Doesn't really tell me much. The drop down box on the toolbar displays the current active ontology. The drop down box on the toolbar, this I guess. I don't, okay. I don't know what they mean by drop down box on the toolbar. I don't see. Unless they mean this whole box. They must mean this whole box. Displays the current. Uh, displays the current active ontology. That is to say, the one into which all edits take place. Okay. When working on. A single ontology, the concept of an active ontology is not a concern, so why mention it now? The top right of the toolbar is home to the search button, which, surprise, can be used to open a search. What do you search for? I don't know. Okay, now where is that search button? Well, I don't see one. Oh, there it is. Oh, I see my... Uh, Windows too big for my screen here. Let's bring this over a bit. Oh, come on. There we go. It's also too tall. I'll make it a bit shorter. Whoops, that's not it. I really hate working with Java interfaces. Just everything's just uh, just a wee bit different from Windows, and you wouldn't think that throws you off, but it does. It, it really does. All right, so there's our search co. Okay, so okay, so okay, these are search parameters. I don't know what we're searching for. Let's try pizza. Okay, let's try pepperoni. And. We don't see it at all, although we do know it exists. It just doesn't show up. So it must just search, I don't know, entities, whole words, ignore white space, case sensitive. I don't want it case sensitive. Oh, well, I don't know. Okay. <coughs> see, why? No, well, I was about to complain. Why? Yeah, okay. So why tell us there's a search here? For not going to use it for something. What's the point? Okay. Uh, so I've done quite a bit of reading, and all I know really so far is that when you start it up, we see the act of ontology. That's all they needed to tell me thus far. But, well, they told me more that didn't tell me anything. All right, navigation. Now switch to the entities tab. Okay, which we did earlier. Okay. Okay, so annotation properties, data types, individuals, classes, properties, etc. So individuals, classes. All right, let's come back here. Achoo, excuse me. Sorry about the sneeze. Okay, from this location you can explore all the classes, properties, and individuals in an ontology. Okay, it's each tab of is made up of several views that can be moved around, floated, etc. Yep, that is confirmed. In fact, let's put this at about halfway, and that looks a little bit nicer. They can move moved around, I suppose. Usage. Oh. Oops, I don't know what I did there. I get things popping up. All right. Okay, annotations. All right, it's quite a bit of stuff here. It's, it's a com fairly complex interface. 
Okay. Um, the selection model is global when a class property or individual is selected. In the trees on the left hand side, the right pane changes the dis to display the selection immediately. So, right, so, right, I've chosen medium. I suppose I chose spicy pizza. Okay, so here's the annotations. Here's the equivalent to pizza and has interesting it's so it's a, a logical equivalency spicy pizza is equivalent to pizza and has topping some spicy topping okay it's very very logical ontologies all right um, Backward and forward navigation is possible just like a web browser. Oh, that's kind of cool. So I can back. Oh, yeah. So it remembers what I was looking at. Cool. All right. Back to the instructions. All right. Another easy way to navigate around the ontology is to perform a search, which they told me above. Uh, performs a global search in the loaded ontologies but it doesn't tell me what it searches for I do know it doesn't find pepperoni um, the various hierarchy views have their own search dialogues okay reasoning <laughs> we're going to jump right to reasoning <laughs> okay Reasoning over your ontology is a commonly performed activity and protege comes with a built-in reasoner called hermit. To reason over Americans and their prepositions. Uh, to reason over your ontology, open the reasoner menu and select hermit. Okay. Open the reasoner menu. Uh-huh. Select Hermit. Okay. And nothing happens. Okay. Then what? Next press Control R. Right, because there can't be a button or anything. Control R. And it did stuff, but then it vanished. Okay. Um, this will start the reasoner. After the reasoner finishes, you can then ins inspect your ontology to view inferred information. Okay. All right. So. Okay. Let's look at the example. For example, select American in the class hierarchy under named pizza, which is under pizza, which is under food, which is under domain concept. Okay. I'm sure there's better ways I could have done that, but okay. Food, pizza. Uh, I'm lost already. Um, under named pizza. Okay named pizza here we go American okay oh yeah these are all the names of pizzas okay except you can't get American pizza in Canada so it, it seems weird to me why not just use mushroom pizza or Monte Carlo or Prince Carlo or what and never mind American hot yeah all right, keep going. Um, notice that some of the information on the right-hand side is developed is displayed in yellow background. This is inferred information. It is information that has been computed by the reasoner. Right. So it's inferred that it's cheesing, interesting, and meaty. Yeah has topping only mozzarella or pepperoni sausage or tomato. OK. 
Okay. So that's the only things it can have, I guess. There's different meanings of only, right? Um, right. Because it could mean like only one of, but that doesn't seem to be the sense here. And then it has some, some, so mozzarella, pepperoni, and tomato, I guess. I guess you're supposed to know what an American pizza is. <laughs> and I don't. So, <laughs> so I assume an American pizza has mozzarella, pepperoni, and tomato. Doesn't sound like a very good pizza. I would have just called this a pepperoni pizza. And interestingly, they don't have that as a selection. Okay. All right. So, but mostly it's, we see the yellow concept, which is inferred. You can also switch to the inferred class hierarchy using the drop down box on the right, top right of the class hierarchy. All right. Oh, asserted and inferred. Ah. Huh. Okay. Oh, I see it now. It's not under named, it's under interesting. Right? See, pizza. There is nothing under this. But if we look at inferred, yes, there is stuff under interesting. All of these are interesting, I guess. And named is still there. So this is, this is the power of an ontology, right? Um, we don't have to put in all the values for everything. Um, we put in the values for some things like named pizza and a row, and that allows us to infer some other information that we didn't explicitly type in. For example, American pizza is classified under interesting pizza. No saying whether that's true or false, it's just the way it is okay all right that's kind of cool there are other reasoners available for protege etc etc don't know what the differences are between them don't care at this point investigate other tabs okay owl viz requires installation of graph viz well i installed everything so uh, because why wouldn't you before anything will be visible. This tab shows a graphical representation of the class subsumption hierarchy. So let's have a look. Owl viz. Well, where do we find it? Tools? No. Um, view? No. Uh, other tabs. Well, where's another? Hmm. Maybe I don't have it installed, even though I thought I installed everything. Oh, there's the uh, cookie crumbs version there. That's kind of useful. That, that's more useful than pointing me to something that I don't seem to have. Okay, help protege plugins, protege plugin library. Okay, that doesn't help me much at all. All right, let's graph viz. A full description of owl viz. Okay, let's go to graph viz first. Okay. GraphViz is open source graph visualization software. Yeah, okay, I like that. So let's download it. Hmm. Source code or executable Linux. Let's go with the one that contains all tools and libraries. All right. 
let's click on that. Is this an archive? Bin. A cyclic.exe. Okay. Maybe it is. Let's try that again. We'll go back to our downloads. Right, it is a zip file. Okay, so we'll have to unzip it, I guess. So let's extract all. Now let's toss it where? Does it say where? Probably not. That's not what I want. Um, hmm. Now I've lost myself. You see what happens here? Now, now I'm lost. I've lost my uh, guide. Hmm. Control H. Okay. See, it's kind of weird, right? There, there's no, there's no icon or anything here in the documentation. They, they don't, they haven't used an image icon. I don't know why. It's not like it's hard to do. Okay, so getting back to getting started. Yeah, I seem to have lost that page entirely. All right. And now, the reasoning we just saw, we all viz, open link in new tab. Okay, so this is the download page. Right, so we definitely don't have all viz available here for us. You can activate the all viz tab once the plugin is installed, you can activate it. Okay, so let's install the plugin. I think installing the plugin means um, extracting it into a directory. So let's browse, we'll put that into program files again, select folder, extract. Okay, graph viz, there it is, bin, etc. Okay, all right, so let's say that's <clears throat> installed. See how it's see how many ways there are for things to go wrong here for, for somebody new to this. Like, this isn't simple, you have to have a, a whole pile of background knowledge to make any sense out of these instructions. And, and a lot of people just don't have that knowledge. When it says install, you know, it, it just leaves them with the blank because their experience with installing might be, you know, double click on the application and it installs. Here you double click on the application and you get the, the extract window and you sort of go, what? Okay, and even now, I'm not sure I have in fact actually installed it. But anyhow, um, so okay. Window tabs all of is okay. So let's find that window tabs ah all of is and there it is. It might actually have been installed and I just didn't know it. Let's see what else. Window tabs comod IDE whatever that is. Yeah. Okay, so, okay, I could come back to that. Do I want to close the tab? Yeah. All right, so this is the more important thing 
that they could have told us is that when you install it and you you've selected all these things they're all available now here okay anyhow okay all of is all right let's go back to owl thing owl viz the reasoner is not synchronized this may produce misleading results. Reasoners out of sync. All right, let's do Control R. Remember, we no, I don't know if that did anything. This really doesn't look like a very good visualization. Uh, class radius three. Let's make that bigger. No. It sort of got like half a. There, I've opened it in its own window. I just can't see the uh, the image. Is there any way to move it? Wow! Just wow! Class radius. Hmm. All right. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to close it and reopen it. Uh, no, I don't want to save any changes I've made. Okay. So let's reopen it. How do I reopen it? Well, I. Hmm. How do I reopen it? Because <laughs> I guess I have to go back to where I installed it. There it is. So what I'll do here is I'll just right click and then pin to start. And now it'll be there for me. There we go. Owl viz, owl thing, active ontology. Okay, we don't have any ontologies on the go at the moment. So, file open from URL. Let's open our pizza. Okay. Loading it again because I didn't save it right. That's why I have to do this. Owl viz, whole thing and the image still doesn't look right wow oh my goodness oh and this didn't open at all to the dimensions of the window <coughs> hmm. zoom out zoom in okay zoom out that makes it smaller. Zoom in makes it bigger. Okay. Can I drag this? No. Can I? That's all any of these things do is ask me to select a class radius. <laughs> That's stupid. Sorry, but that's stupid. Split horizontally, split vertically, float, close, split. No, that's not going to help me. Horizontally. Still doesn't help me. Let's try changing my display. I don't know. That's really annoying. Um, wow. Let's go back to keep changes. So now I'll come back here to this. No. It's crazy. Why can't tools?
Show class, show children. Hide class, oops. Hide children, show children. Show parents. I just have no idea how to move that. I can't click and hold on it. Whoops. There's that stupid pop up again. That exports export to image. Okay. Image. And it saved it somewhere. <laughs> Where? Try that again. The location and name. Okay, let's browse. Did it put it? Okay. I wonder where it put the other one. So we'll go into documents and see if we can't find it. Documents and date modified and it's not here. Oh, stupid Microsoft is sending me to my to OneDrive documents. Okay, date modified. Oh, it's still not here. Let's try. This is more my fault than uh, the applications, I think. Well, maybe it put it in C. It really didn't give me a choice as to where to put it, so. Well, it sort of did. Nope. All right, let's see if I can't find that again. Export, next, next. Oh, I'm gonna browse. Documents, sss.png. OneDrive essays document, oh my goodness. Why would it go there? must be the first documents it found it must like the way this it, it had to work is like it scans through and uh, just the first document it finds that's what it does that's that's what it selects all right so this now is in SSDE documents okay so let's save it and now let's try to find it in e documents and still not there well that's weird save e documents SSD or SSS.png, right? We see that E documents SSS. All right, finish. There we go. Let's open it. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Bravo. That's uh, the best outcome from a Stephen Follows instructions thing yet. Okay. So, Alv is. Maybe it works better on a Linux machine or Apple or I don't know. But 
maybe it's the uh, let's go to protege look and feel no it doesn't do anything refresh user interface that doesn't do anything Unbelievable. Yeah, that this is really bad. Any any other tabs? Let's let's close and try to open it again. But I don't think it's going to be better, is it? Because I think I already tried this. Let's try a different ontology. Open from URL, Koala. Uh, okay. Window, tabs. Oh, it should already have all this. Yeah, okay. All this. Well, same problem. Wow. Just wow. I don't understand. <laughs> that is incredible. Oops, that's not what I wanted. That's definitely not what I wanted. Uh, be wider or skinnier that's yeah, kind of good how does that look on the screen yeah that's kind of where I was okay so not that that helps this at all it's still just as bad Wow this actually kind of fuzzy <laughs> how's that look hmm Just terrible. Just terrible. Wonder what happens if I try putting it on the other screen. So so now it I've got it on the right hand screen. Oh, it's definitely not easier to read, is it? And Alviz still doesn't work properly. Can I use arrows maybe? No. <sighs> Alright, well the uh, conclusion here is that it just, the Viz just doesn't work on Windows. Oops, that's a bit too big now. So, yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, yeah, that's too bad. I'm just trying to get the, uh, the display back to what it was. what it was oh, that feels nice let's keep this oh, that feels great okay at least I can read it a bit more clearly all right so that's too bad okay let's keep going just fails miserably see this is what it's supposed to look like Uh, 
Um, of course, they're showing it with a different example and not. Oh, I see. Okay, that's why. <coughs> Maybe I downloaded the wrong one. Is that possible? No. No, it's not possible. Let's try. Okay, there's preferences. Okay, let's try. File, preferences. All of is okay. All right, so the actual okay, graph viz. Path dot dot exe. <laughs> And again, I'm not getting the proper display size because, well, you know. Yeah, C program files. I put it in C. I wonder if it's different if bin dot exe. There. Okay. Oh, this kind of, they did make a change, but not much of a change. I'm just restarting it. And uh, all right, let's load the ontology. Open from URL. Pizza, pizza. Oh wait, that's koala. Pizza. And now owl viz. Ah, there we go. All right, here's my theory. I downloaded everything, remember? I said, yeah, I include all the classes, all, all the, but the included applications might not have been for Windows. Or maybe it was out of date or something, but it was fixed by me going into the uh, the preferences for Alviz and changing it to the one that I actually downloaded specifically for Windows and tossed into program files. So interesting. And now rank spacing and sibling spaces still can't. It's unfortunate you still can't drag stuff around, eh? Whoops, I can't get. All right, cancel. I guess he still can't drag stuff around. No. All right. How about that? <laughs> I'll bet you it uh, outputs properly as well. Let's try. All right, let's go with the asserted hierarchy, a PNG document. Let's browse. Let's save it. Oh, yeah, it's going to save it. The default save location is in the bin directory. Just bad programming, people. Bad programming. Documents, SS. Okay. Save, finish. Nowhere else do you have to do it twice, like save and then finish. But the designers of this application said, no, no, let's make them hit two things in order to save. All right, documents, SSS, pinch, and I'll open it up. That's better. That's much better. Okay. <laughs> craziness. All right.
back to our instructions. All right. That's reasoning, all viz. Okay, we've made it work. Investigate views. Okay. Each tab is made up of multiple views, each with its own perspective on the ontology or just one aspect of the ontology, like the last selected class. Views can be stacked on top of each other, in which case you'll see additional tabs for exposing them. Examples of this are the usage views that are by default on the entities, classes, etc. Select the tab to make the view visible. All right, let's see if we can parse this. <laughs> okay. Each tab is made of multiple views. Okay, so each tab, I assume these are the tabs, but these might be the tabs as well. And it doesn't look like it. I think they mean these. It's made up of multiple views. I think those are just view options. Maybe these are different views. I don't know. Don't know. Let's okay. Let's assume that this is a tab and this tab has multiple views. What that let's assume that what that means is just making this fit the screen better. There we go. Okay, so these things here are the views. So usage, annotations. So, oh, okay, each tab has multiple views. Each of these are views, I guess. And they may be tabbed or they may just be boxes. Let's, let's assume that. Let's assume that's what they mean. Okay, let's try to keep going. Each with its own part. Views can be stacked on top of each other, in which case you will see additional tabs for exposing them. All right. Annotations usage. Well, okay. See, I can't move any of these things. So, I don't know how to stack things on top of each other, but let's, let's assume that someone somewhere can stack views on top of each other. All right. And so... All of these tabs are different views stacked on top of each other. All of these tabs are different views stacked on top of each other. Here we have two views stacked on top of each other. These views are not stacked on top of each other. In theory, I suppose, I could drag this. What if I close this description? and it goes away. If I close this, property assertions, it goes away. Now, how do I get them back? View, window, views. Ah, uh -huh. okay, so annotation property hierarchy. There it is. I see, okay, now, window view let's put individual view de description put it right on top oh just put it under okay so i still don't know how to put things on top of each other but the idea here is that i have all of these different views data type views oh, i did description already let's try to put it here there we go. Oh, I've successfully done that, done that. So I can get rid of this. Oh no, get rid of this. Oh. 
which is different. Description, RDF, this is just plain. Huh. Annotations, direct instances. Usage description. Let's close that. All right. DC description. Let's close that. All right. Annotations usage. Now let's try for a view. Find a view. Annotation pro. Oh, I see. There's. I just picked a different type of thing. Okay. Class views. Let's pick class hierarchy. Let's put it right on top. And it didn't go right on top. Let's try that again. There's got to be a special way to stack them. Okay. Notation property hierarchy. Like that. No, it just didn't go. Okay. Views. No, it won't let me stack it on top. So, okay, there's maybe some sort of secret to how to do it. But the main thing is, I can open and close these views as I wish. See there, it's stacked okay. Oh, okay, that might be how you stack them. Let's close this. Let's close this. All right. Let's go with annotation property hierarchy. Click in the middle. Yeah, so, okay. So if you click up here where you'd think, that'll actually create a separate box. But if you click in the middle, that's how you stack them. All right. So that's a lot of overhead. Um, you know, if I was designing this application, I'm not sure I would have built all of that overhead into it. By overhead, what I mean is stuff you need to learn about how the environment works as opposed to how to use the environment. You know, the, the way you should design it is give beginning users the basic environment and then as they become more advanced, allow them to modify their views. Here, we're on page one of our instructions and we're modifying our views. I'm sure it's not, you know, I'm sure it's real powerful stuff, but it's not what I need at this point. Okay. All of the views that are on tabs by default and many more that aren't list, that aren't, <laughs> all of the views that are, <laughs> we need two commas here. All of the views that are on tabs by default, comma, and many more that aren't, comma, are listed in the views menu. You can add and remove views to create your own custom interfaces. Okay, reconfiguring the user interface is easy, although irrelevant to what I'm trying to do. Um, Adding or removing tabs and views as possible through the tabs and views view menus. Okay, so window and tabs. Oh, yeah, okay, so here we have all these tabs. We saw this before, right? Different tabs. So there's another tab. <laughs> Medium. Oh, thing. I don't know what this is. Ontograph. Okay. I'm sure that's a fun tab. Yes. It looks like a fun tab, doesn't it? Okay. Owl thing. The main thing. Value partition. Right. Food. Ice cream. I think I'll stick with having this class hierarchy on this left hand side. That seems pretty useful. All right. Um, okay, so we've done that. For a demonstration on view manipulation, see, please see the video below. How long is it? 52 seconds. We can do that. Boop. 
there's no sound if you're wondering right because of course why why would there be sound or a you know or a narration or something explaining to us what's happening no why would we want that stupid people stanford our demonstration on how to add close and reset tab okay human readable entity names right yeah I picked up on that. Many ontologies, in particular biomedical ontologies, use alphanumeric codes as the identifiers of classes, properties, and individuals because they were built by engineers. Never mind. If your class hierarchy just looks like a jumble of numbers or other computer generated codes, but you have labels for each entity, you can ask Protege, no accents, notice that, to use these labels when displaying entities instead. Select File Preferences, select the Renderer tab of the Preferences dialog. Okay, so File, Preferences, the Renderer tag, here it is. Okay. Um, and then, see this is good, look, look nice. One, two, three, four, or five, and five. That's what you do. Choose render entities using annotation values. Um, okay, here it says render by annotation property. Okay, so there's a bit of a difference between the what's going on here, but okay, render by entity IRI short name, rendered by prefixed annotation property configure okay yeah it's just okay let's have a little fun let's do it like that okay no reasoner has been initialized so inference cannot proceed uh oh I'm in a loop I'm in a loop <laughs> go to the reasoner message menu but I can't go to the reasoner menu as long as I'm <sighs> people okay I'm gonna that's terrible that's just terrible I'm gonna have to close this out somehow close window is it even gonna let me close the window Wow Wow okay let's Fortunately, in Windows, we have a task manager. <laughs> and uh, let's see, find my app that's running. Java. Pizza. And, uh, oops. Oh, it's going to be down on that side there. Okay. No. Pizza. End task. I hit a right click there. So that's going to end that task. In theory. No. Let's try just ending Java entirely. I will end you. Okay. That seems to have gotten rid of it. So we'll close that out. So let that be a lesson to you. Choose a renderer first, because if you do not choose a renderer first, and then you try to do something that unknown to you uses the renderer, you will be trapped in a loop because that's the way this works. And then when you open it up again, you'll have to resize it because it doesn't remember what size it was because why would it? That's only convenient for the user. All right, so let's remember what we were trying to do. First of all, let's enable a reason. Okay, control R. All right. Now, what was I trying to do? <laughs> um, I was trying to file 
preferences. Um, reasoner, renderer. Render by IRI short name, okay. Yeah, this time it worked. But check that and check that out what it does. Individuals by class. That doesn't really seem to have made a whole lot of difference. I will think. Oh, well, let's. I haven't imported anything yet. Uh, let's open from URL. Pizza, pizza. All right, here it is. Now, let's look at my entities, object properties, active ontology, individuals by class. Here we go, whole thing. Food, ice cream, pizza base, pizza topping. Yeah, these still all seem pretty much the same. Nothing's inferred. <laughs> all right, now let's try to uh, alter the alter the way we see them okay renderer render by prefixed name there we go see it looks a bit different now doesn't it all right or let's render by Again, what they were suggesting, well, in this case, annotation property. So, still not perfect, but okay. Okay, where labels are provided, Protege will now display these in all views. So, Let's choose render entities using annotation values. That's not an actual choice. Okay, so annotations. All right, let's see. I don't seem to be seeing these things. Okay, classes. Okay, here's all of our classes again. All right. For some reason, the this menu doesn't change what's happening here, but maybe this menu will. Yeah, see, this menu does. So I don't know why this one doesn't and that one does. Okay. Oh, come on, people. Okay, entities. So, MIDI pizza. Okay, RDFS label. Can I change that here? Cancel. Doesn't look like it. Oh, IRI editor. Property values. No, this is just tells. Hmm. Yeah, I haven't been able to actually edit anything yet. You notice that? Really? Okay, annotations, usage. But I'd like to edit it. Object properties. Let's try. Oh, no. <laughs> Classes. Individuals. No. I don't know why individuals become our countries, but. So I don't know how to edit the label. Can I just click on it? Here we go. I'm going to give it a space. There, and I've changed it now. It says meaty pizza with a space, so it can be read 
by a real human and not by a machine. All right, I'm, I've got to almost finish here because I have to finish off my newsletter. Okay, having familiarized yourself with the Proto-J interface, you can try, you could try our fast and dirty guide to building a pizza ontology in 10 minutes. That's what we'll do next. But I got to stop this episode um, because I have to finish my newsletter. So 